What's up everybody? I'm just gonna do a uh, quick little video here on let's talk about going on vacation and what to do about your reef tank while you are on vacation. I just got back from a five day trip out of town and came back to a perfectly running tank. Everything just as expected, just as normal, no surprises. Uh, all the corals alive, all the fish alive. Let's, let's talk about a couple things that you need to do. What to do when you're gonna go out of town and you're worried about your reef tank surviving the time that uh, you're gone. First thing, planning, plan it out. Know when you're leaving, know when you're coming back. Um, next thing, know your tank. Don't, don't do this with a tank that you just set up like a week ago and you have no clue how it works, how it operates. You're, you're not used to the day-to-day -day functions of the reef yet. You don't know how much it's evaporating or anything like that. Um, kind of have a feel for your tank. Know what it can handle, what it can't handle. You know, I know that I can pretty much just leave my tank alone and it'll be fine. Um, it, it's pretty much self-automating. Trying to get... See, there, there is a reef tank here. We'll switch around and we'll give you a view of the reef tank here in a minute. Um, have plenty of water made. Have plenty of top-off water made. Um, have that... Fill up your top-off right before you walk out the door. That way there's as much top-off in the top off reservoir as possible. If you don't have an auto top off, get one. But don't get one like a day before you leave and set it up because you don't know how it operates. Um, again, that comes back to knowing your tank, knowing how it works, how it operates, what works, what doesn't. Um, the next big thing is, is have somebody that you trust that can come and check on your tank, a, a tank sitter. Have somebody that um, Hopefully you're lucky enough to actually have somebody that's in the hobby that actually knows about reef tanks or aquariums even just a little bit. Um, I'm lucky to have a family member that uh, has been doing this for a couple of years now and he, so I trusted him to, to come and look at the tank and just basically know if anything's wrong. Um, had him come and just feed the fish while twice during the five days. Um, I had an auto feeder on there to give them one feeding a day, so I just had them come basically just to check the top off, put eyeballs on the tank. Is it alive? Is it dead? Is there water all over the ground? Is, is the power still on? Is it circulating? Uh, the, the temperature's not 60 degrees or 90 degrees, you know, just basic stuff. Um, and I don't know, I, I guess that's, that's pretty much it. Just plan it plan it out um, and have have somebody that you trust that can come in and check on it and uh, know your tank. Um, here, let's go ahead and flip you around and we'll give you a shot of the tank after five days of me not being here to care for it. And this is with a blue filter over the camera. And as you can see, oh, everything's fine. Everything made it. All fish are alive and accounted for. Um, my tank sitter did have to top off the auto top off reservoir once, which I knew he was going to have to. But when I got back, it was still pretty full. So it may have made it, it may not have. Probably needed the top off. Um, you know, don't do anything major to your tank. You know, don't, don't add any new equipment um, right before you go. Um, don't, yeah, don't, don't do any changes because you don't know how your system is going to react and you want to be here uh, to, to make sure everything's going to be fine. So leave everything as it is. If you've got a new controller to put on it, wait till you get back. If you've got a new skimmer to put on it, wait till you get back from vacation. Um, if you're going to set up some new lights, wait. you got anything new, a dosing system, wait until you get back. Um, you don't want to have any new equipment do something weird and cause a problem while you're not here to fix it. So let's go ahead and we'll give you a quick shot of the, uh, the corals. There's my little euphelia garden that is growing. I know I have two of the same ones. My mistake. Little acan garden that I'm going to be doing something with here pretty soon. I'm going to get a piece of live rock out of the live rock bucket and probably glue all these onto a piece of rock. And most of these started out as a single head. And the camera does not do it justice. And the clownfish is home, the Duncan. I do need to get in there and siphon out some detritus. 
Um, it's been a little while, so that's all the little particulate that you're seeing is, is a bunch of tritus, detritus getting kicked around. Fiji bird's nest, growing, it's grown back from a nub. A couple of acros. Frog skin there in the very back there, there's the red planet. My big staghorn that is just taking over. The Walt Disney that is slowly encrusting. My two massive Monty caps that need to be cut back here um, in the next couple of days, probably maybe next weekend. I'm gonna be doing a reset on some of these bigger colonies that grow very fast, like this Pasilopora. That's gonna get probably totally removed because I have a ton of it. And, and another little speck of it right there, so. We're, we're removing a bunch of that. Miyagi Tort, that is going to get pulled out and reset. Uh, make room for something new on this rock, as well as that colony, which will be cut back. And we can just make some more room. A big fuzzy acro. I'm still playing around with these lenses, so I don't know if I like this one or not yet. The Hawkins, um, Garf Bonsai, Red Satosa, some of my little Acan Gardens, Jason Fox, uh, Jack O' Lantern. Two chalices here. So yeah, everything made it, as you can see. So don't be afraid to uh, to leave your tank for a few days. It will be fine. It all comes down to you and how well you have everything set up and planned out. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share if you found this content interesting.